Hello, everyone. Um, can you hear me? We can. All yes. right. Thanks. Uh, afternoon, everyone. My name is Ian Mangenga, and I will be presenting this workshop today, today on data visualization. And I just want to share my screen. Can everyone see that? We can. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just going to have my screen on right now while I say this introduction, and then I'm going to switch it off so that, um, first of all, so that I can focus better on what I'm going to be doing, and also so that you can focus on the presentation itself. So, yes, welcome to the um, to this workshop on data visualization. I tried my best to craft it for scientists um but uh struggle to get a bit of data and i must say before i start that i am very nervous because i've never had to present um this data visualization workshop to scientists i myself come from a science background and i do feel like i am preaching to the converted because um out of out of all faculties in uni, I find that scientists were sci like science BSc rather is a faculty that makes use of um, of data visualization more than all the other faculties um, outside of commerce or information system. So I am nervous and I tried my best to make it very interesting and relatable to you all. But as I said, I will be the presenter for for today's session for the session and this workshop is designed for beginners who have no prior experience with data visualization although I think that's not the case in this group and we will focus on Google Data Studio so that might be the one the one new thing that you will um, you'll take away from this workshop and my goal is to provide you with a basic understanding of Google Data Studio which is now called Looker and how to use it to create reports and visualizations for your data. And by the end of this hour, you'll be able to create a basic report, connect your data sources and apply basic visualization uh, techniques. Um, I will also share a little bit on how you, you can share and collaborate on your various reports uh, with your team members or colleagues. So, yeah, um, and also I'll be moving in between screens here and there. I'm gonna start here on this presentation and then the rest of the session will be on um, on Google's Data Studio Lookup. Okay, so, okay, that's just a breakdown of what I'm gonna be doing. Introduction, covering setup, um, after um, covering setup, connecting your data sources, basic visualization, sharing and collaboration, and then the conclusion. Um, okay, so, so data visualization is the representation of data or information in a visual format, such as graphs, charts, maps, and other visual tools, which is something that as geologists, I can imagine you've had to do your whole career from, um, from undergrad, uh, from undergrad year. So I, I feel comfortable and a bit at ease knowing that it's not, the subject is not completely foreign to you. And it involves using visual elements like colors, shapes, and patterns to communicate information and data relationships more effectively. For example, imagine you have a spreadsheet with a lot of data that shows the sales of a product or several, over several years. You can use data visualization to create a line chart that shows how the sales have changed over time, making it easier to see trends and other patterns in data or at a glance, or rather in your case, um, you could use this information to to show the, ge the change in ge of geological formation of a particular area over um, a particular period. 
And in the past, scientists might have relied on tables or written reports to present their findings, but data visualization can make the data much more accessible and easier to understand. By presenting data in a visual format, geologists can communicate their findings more effectively, identify patterns and relationships in the data more easily, and make, and make data-driven decisions with greater confidence. So, what are the different types of, or rather, why is uh, why is data visualization important for geologists? It's important because it helps you communicate findings in a clear and visually appealing way, making it accessible to a broader audience. Um, by making use of data visualization, you can quickly identify patterns and trends in a large uh, uh, data set that may not be apparent from raw data alone. And um, also visualization tools can help you explore more complex relationships between variables and test different hypotheses. And lastly, Data visualization can help you improve your data qu uh, quality by identifying errors and outliers in data way more quickly, way, way much faster. And then the types of different uh, of data visualizations that you can use. So we have line charts that we use to show trends over time and relationships between variables. We have bar charts to compare data between different categories or groups. We have scatter plots where we show relationships between two variables and identify patterns or clusters. We have heat maps where we show patterns or relationships in large data sets by coloring cells based on their value. We have network diagrams used to show relationships between entities such as social networks or biological pathways. We have geographic maps used to show the distribution of data over geographic areas. We have box plots where, where we use these to show the distribution of a data set and identify outliers or extreme values. We have Sankey diagrams where we can show the flow of data or energy between different stages or processes. And we also have um, tree maps where we show the hierarchy of data relationships and compare their sizes. Now, these are just a few examples. Um, these are just a few examples of the many types of data visualizations that geologists can use to explore and communicate their data more effectively. So now onto Google's Data Studio Looker. Google's Data Studio is a free reporting and data visualization tool offered by Google. It allows you to create interactive and customizable reports and dashboards from a variety of data sources, including Google Sheets, Google Analytics, and more. You can also import data from other sources, such as um, MySQL or Post uh, GRE SQL and BigQuery. And Looker offers a wide range of visualization options, including charts, graphs, tables, and maps, and provides a drag and drop interface that makes it easy to create and customize your reports. You can also apply filters and other interactive elements to your reports to provide more detailed insights into your data. So uh, one of the reasons why I love uh, Looker for um, for data visualization is that it's a great tool for collaboration and allows you to share your reports with your team or other collaborators who can provide feedback and make suggestions. And also, most importantly, it allows you to save time and focus on analyzing the data rather than spending hours formatting and creating reports manually. So I'm going to get into it now. I'm going to stop sharing for a bit while I uh, I'm going to stop sharing for a bit while I go onto the browser because I want to take everyone with me on the journey from how you log on and how um, introduce you to the interface and then we'll create a board together so as I said in the beginning um, unfortunately, my lack of geological knowledge does not allow me to um, create a particular dashboard for geologists or 
or presenting geological data, but I will create one in a field that I'm very familiar with. And the principles are more or less the same, and you can um, and you can take and you can apply them to your data sets. So we will be using Google Analytics, just looking at data sets from a website visits, and we'll be using one of the free data samples that Google supplies us with. So okay, let me just head on over to the browser. Hmm. Okay, I'm in and then I'll just uh I'll just share my screen once I'm on there. So the reason why I turned, I, I decided to stop sharing my screen is because I wanted to start the process on a completely new um, email link so that you wouldn't get con um, confused um, when we when we land on the interface because I've been using mine quite a lot of times. So there'd be way more information on it than one that has just started. And um, I wanted you to experience it as if you're seeing it for the first time as you would when you go and do it yourself if you haven't been on Looker yet. So I'm just trying to log on. And I'm one of those people that have a lot of Gmail accounts. <laughs> so, um, okay, Google Data. Yeah. Okay, I think I can start sharing my screen from here. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, so can you see that um, I'm on Google search? Yeah. Okay, so um, so I think the easiest way to access the Google Data Studio is to type Google Data Studio, because if you go, if you search, um, if you search uh, Google Looker, then this is where you would end up. And um, if you click on here, you will see that it will give you um, this option where you have to request a demo and yeah, which is way more complicated. It's not really complicated, but you know, essentially you're not trying to go through that whole process. You just want to um, get the free version and start creating reports. So I suggest you just type Google Data Studio, and then the first, uh, the first search that's going to, the first result that's going to pop up should read Google uh, Looker Studio Overview, and you can choose to sign in. I think I'm already signed in. Let's check. Yes, but I'm just going to change that over here and use a different email account. Yes, so this is where you end up. And uh, one thing you should remember that is if you end up here, chances are you, you're still on the right place, but it's going to take you way much longer to get to where you actually need to be because there's a free version of Looker and I suggest everyone starts there. So just go back to your search at, uh, to your search tab and tap Google Data Studio so that you can end up right here. And yeah, so if you are not signed in onto your Gmail account, then you will have to sign in. And also it works easier if you have a Gmail account. I know there's quite a few people that are still roaming around with Yahoo emails or a work email or, uh, or your academic institution's email. You can still access it, but it's way much easier if you access it through your Gmail accounts because, um, that's how Google also encourages people to just create more email accounts, I guess. So yeah, you will go to your search engine, type Google Data Studio, click the first results that you get, 
And then um, if you have not signed in, then you will click the sign in button in the top right corner of the page, which would be somewhere here, but this would not be there. This would not be showing because you wouldn't be signed in as yet. And then you'll enter your Google account, email and password, and then you'll be redirected to the Loka Studio homepage, which is this. And uh, I'm just gonna give you a brief outlook of the um, uh, of of this interface. So over here, it's if you've ever interacted with any of the um, of Google's products like Google Drive, then you should be familiar with this. So all your recent work will sit under this tab. And then when you go on here, you will have all the reports that people have shared with you. And then um, on Owned by Me, it will be all the reports that you have on your own. And then if you wanna create a new report, you will go on here, create a new report. So we're not gonna click on that as yet. I just wanna take you through some of this. And then you have your data sources. I'll talk more about this once we start creating our um, our reports, but I love that. Um, and I swear, Google is not paying me for this, but I wish they were. <laughs> but you can connect so many data sources um, onto this, like, and you'll see the different types of data sources that you can connect. And I love that Google keeps making it easier and easier for us to just do our work seamlessly by automating all of these things that were previously so redundant to do. And then on Explorer, that's where you can also um, link other data sets like BigQuery and all of those. And my favorite is templates. Um, so you have templates for different dashboards so that you don't have to start from scratch. You have your Google Analytics over there if you want to show marketing, if you want to show e-commerce, merchandising, behavior, behavioral overviews, you know, big query over there for um, different types of data sets. Um, yeah, you also have like YouTube Analytics. So if you feel like you're too intimidated to start off with a clean reports, you can really just start off with any of these templates and just edit it as you go. So, um, but I'm going to, I'm going to create a new one. Um, and you can click, you can either click here on create, or you can click on blank reports. It's all the same, really doesn't matter. And then, yeah, we are going to create a report. So I'm going to go ahead and click reports. Um, okay, so like I said, I had not, I wanted to start off with a new account, so um, I haven't gone through this process of completing my account setup, so I'm just going to go ahead and complete that. Company Digital Girl Africa. Got to accept those terms and conditions. Uh, tips, yes. Product announcements, yes. Yes. Okay, and here we are. Before I close that tab, sorry, I closed that tab. I should have explained what it was, but uh, I just wanted to take you through this interface first. So over here, I'm just going to write workshop report. And enter, yeah. So this is the interface. Over here is your toolbar where you have buttons. Uh, it includes buttons for creating new reports, opening existing reports and accessing the menu. And then the menu, this is a, this is located on the far left side, but because it won't be, it won't make sense right now. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and add data so that you can be able to see all of those things that I'm speaking about. And this is the, um, this is a slide that I closed um, a few minutes ago, but yeah, it's how you get to connect your data. 
And maybe I should have started with those points. There's three parts to, uh, to Google Data Studio. It's connect, visualize, and share. Connect is where you connect your data from your various data or uh, chosen data source. Visualize is when you get to, when you start to customize and visualize that data. And share is you basically downloading or sharing that report that you've created with everyone else. So I like to think of it in those three steps because it allows me to know what I'm doing next or what needs to be done, what I haven't done. So as I said, um, there's a lot of, there's there's different types of data that can be connected. Ooh, I'm trying to close this. There's different types of data that can be connected to Google's, um, to the Looker Studio. We have Google Sheets over here, which is a popular spreadsheet program that allows you to store and manipulate data in a tabular format and um, you can connect data google sheets by just clicking here we have google analytics which is a web analytics service that allows you to track website traffic and user behavior that's the one we're going to be using today for our example we have google ads which is an online advertising service that allows you to create and display ads on the google network we have bigquery over here which is a cloud-based data warehousing service that allows you to store and analyze large amounts of data. I'm pretty sure as geologists, this, this is um, a service that you might be familiar with or you might use a lot considering the types of data sets that you deal with on a regular. Uh, and then we have uh, Cloud SQL and MySQL, these are popular open source relational database management systems that allow you to store and manage data in a structured format. And um, yeah, and to do any of these, all, oh, and then when you scroll down, you can see the list is endless. So of course, Google lists their services uh, up on top, and then they have others that you can connect, you know, like LinkedIn, Facebook, you know, there's so many others. The list is actually so long. Um, wow, as you can see, this uh, the scroll tab is right at the top and the list is endless. Anyways, I'm gonna go right ahead and click, um, oh, I'm gonna use, because I don't have an existing data set under my Google Analytics, I'm gonna go over here under my data sources. Um, so if you have an account anywhere, maybe for example, if you have an account on BigQuery and you want to connect a particular data set that is, that is sitting under your BigQuery account, sorry about that noise, um, then you can, you, you'll click BigQuery, you'll have to um, authorize that connection and then you'll be able to pick the data set that you want. But because I don't have an existing data set and I'm gonna use one of the samples provided by, by Looker, I'm just gonna click on my data sources. And once you have uploaded your own data sources, this is where you also find them. So, I'm going to use this, let me see, event data source. I think I'm going to use Google Analytics. And you just click add. And then you got to, you'll just follow the prompts and provide the necessary credentials for you to, um, to use the, that report or to use that data. Yeah. So this is a full interface and this is what I wanted um, okay, got it, Google, thank you. Uh, this is the full interface and this is what I wanted us to have so that I can give you a proper overview of the interface. So as I said, we have our toolbar which sits up top over here. And then we have our menu, which is um, which exists in two columns. So the first one, Let's you adjust the um, lets you adjust the visualization um, and it allows you to change the dimensions and metrics presented in the charts and um, and the style of the charts. And then this second one shows us all the fields that are available and it lets us see what is 
well, the different dimensions and um, metrics that we can use when building our charts. So with us, we're just going to build a simple dashboard where maybe I would say, let's look at, let's look at our, um, at our visitors, where they come from. I just want to make a note of this. <laughs> So we're gonna look at our visitor demographics. I'm just making a note here so that I can always know what I am like what data sets I'm looking at. Visitor demographics, um, um, they can the countries that they're from, their age, and maybe what kind of items do they like or favorite pages favorite pages visited okay i'm just going to pop that here in the corner so that it doesn't interfere with everything else that i'm doing so you would have noticed that as soon as, soon as we created the um, uh, we added we created the report we 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 landed on um on our um, canvas our report canvas which is this blank page over here with a table in it so if you click on this table then you're able to um you're able to customize this using these these two columns over here and if you click over here you can see the data when you click over there, that's when they actually show up. So those are the properties, charts, style, you know? Like if you want them to disappear, that's, that is. Um, and yeah, as you can see, we have acquisition, which campaign were they acquired from, um, channel, medium, source, age, app ID version, city, clothing by gender. So we have a lot to work with. And this is what I, um i love about this data studio it allows you to really you can either go wide or deep but depending on your interest if you want to go wide then you can find out what other sources um types of data sets you have on this and try and find ways to apply it overlay it onto your existing data or report to make it more interesting or you can just go for the simple stuff you know and it's um this tab makes it so much easier for you to discover new like like new information like knowing that you have for example maybe something like month of the year when we're looking at number when we're looking at web traffic it would be interesting to find out which month was was the website most visited you know um and those type of things but i mean in the in the advertising sense yes in the advertising marketing or e-commerce sense that would be that would be way more interesting but in the geological sense another type of information would be interesting but i think what i'm trying to put across here is that it's it, it makes it easier for you to scheme through the types of information that you have and that you can play around with. Okay, so I'm just going to bring back the styling chart and we're going to start. So I want to create around four, a dashboard with four or five charts that um, hypothetically maybe I'd be in, in like attaching to a report around the performance of a site. And for the purpose of this workshop, we'll just pretend that this is a website where people come and look at rocks and buy rocks. Uh, so, so wherever you see clothes, just imagine it as a rock. <laughs> and yeah, so in order for you to, we, I'll start by styling this. Um, like customizing this um, and in order for you to to customize it you actually need to click on that to activate it and then we have the setup over here so we have page title and it matches that so maybe if I wanted um, 
okay, let me, I'll, I'll just keep it simple because I also don't want to do too much and confuse you. So I'll keep this very, very, very bare minimum. So yeah, we have our page title over there and we have our metric, which is new users. Um, and then what I want to do, what I want to do is, um, I want to change this, how we've, how we've presented this metric. I want to change it into, I want to include a bar into it. So I'm going to click on style. And then over here, you can see we have wrap text, like wrap text, if you, if the titles were way much longer than, um, than what the space could accommodate, then it would just go below the other words instead of extending out out of the column. So that's what wrap text means. And then this just shows you the size of the font. So I just changed it into 10 right now. And now I'm taking it back to 14. And this is font type. Um, Railway is my favorite font at the moment on Google. And then we have our table colors. You know, you can change it into green you can change it into blue i like that so i'm going to keep it at that and also maybe like you know if you want to make it more playful colorful but yeah we'll get to that later because i feel like i prefer working like getting the data and visualizing it first and then after i can style it in various ways so the um, it's like a ui ux kind of process where i start with the user interface how the data that we have how am i visualizing it and then i come through later or you ux ui rather and then later i come with the color and making it pretty and making it nice so as I said, I want to include a bar graph here or something like that, just to make it um, stand out a bit more. So I'm going to scroll down and look for column one. We only have one column. If we had another matrix over here, and I'm going to try add another matrix so that maybe we can see how that could that would work. Um, okay, yeah. So here we have column one, we have matrix, and over here, I'm going to click on number and choose bar bar and you know so now it has changed from numbers to bar but i'd still like to show the numbers just so that we have a better idea of the kind of numbers we're working on and there it is right and let's see how it would look if it was a heat map actually oh that looks really nice um i like that but it gets a bit confusing when you get right at the bottom when the colors start becoming the same. So I think I'm going to go back to bar. Yes. And like I said, you can also choose how you want your bar to be yellow, whatever, you know. And yeah, so that's step number one, you know. And okay, so let's go back. Let's let's add another dimension. Um let's see. So if you have new users, audience, let's try, um, sessions. Oh, no. Sorry, I'm going to delete that. Let's try sessions. Okay, they have no data on that. Um, okay, I want to use that for something else. J okay, session go. Product. Yeah, I think session would have made more sense. Uh, I don't think this is going to work with that. Okay, let's leave that out. But anyways, what I was trying to show you is that if you had uh, two sets of matrix that could correspond with, with the one dimension, and that's why I think we were not able to add the other matrix because 
um, or like a dimension because then we would then we would be overloading this table with a lot of with firstly two sets of dimensions and it would require it would need to show two sets of matrix which are not really exactly related to one another but if you have data sets if you have in your data sets if you have metrics that um, can both speak to your dimension, then you can add that as a second column and you can go back here and do the same process where you change it. Okay, I see there's a question. Oh, try region. Thanks, Hilton. Um, let me go try, I need to click so that it activates um region so we can just there we go yay okay so I'm just gonna open that up a bit okay all right and then Let's see what how we can style that. So now that has automatically become column one. Or is it column two? Let's see, there's another. Edge is a good one too. Okay, I think I'm gonna create um I'm gonna create a, a bar graph for um for for age and gender. Because I still want to try out different uh, different graphs, so um, let me activate that. Then go to column one. Or column one. Well, we don't exactly have data sets for column one, right? So yeah, okay. That's fine. I think I'll just leave that one over there like this. And I think now, let me go back. Let me add a, I'm going to add a, a bar graph. I'm going to add a bar graph to show countries. So what you do is add chart. And you'll see that on add chart, you have a wide range of options right um you have tables scorecards time series bars you know there's so much this this platform is 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 really fun if you're into data and you want to you you want to up your game really there's never been an easier time so i know i said i'm going to do bar graph actually maybe we can try both i want to do bar graph for countries and i also want to try this google maps because i just love how how the google maps i think it, it will be way more visual and what you do is you click on that add chart click on the type of chart you would like and then you come and then you just draw a square wherever you want it to be so no, we don't want that. We don't want page title anymore. We want um, country. Okay, new users. Um, or maybe instead of new users, let's look at revenue. Okay, I don't think it's gonna give us anything because we're not really working with something impressions okay okay let's go back to new users unless if someone has a suggestion where did that go oh, okay so new users so we can show them like this oh. So we have our new users over there. And then let's try, um, let's do age um, as suggested. Oh, I said I wanna try country using Google Maps.
Oh, yes, it's exactly how I imagined it would be. That's really nice. I think, um, okay, I'll just keep this one. But our board is definitely a little bit on the messy side of things. Thank God this is not being submitted anywhere. Just gonna try and make some space there. I really like this um, this Google Maps, and it's actually also very interactive. Okay, so I can move it around. Okay, I want to move it. There we go. Sheesh. Yep. Okay. I'll just leave that there. Um, okay, so we have um, we have new users shown in different ways. We also we actually all these graphs have are all about new users. And here we've also added um, another metric, which was region suggested by Hilton, where we show where the new users are coming from. Well, the region that they're coming from. So that's. Um, that's extra cool. And um, this page is a little bit messy. So I am going to add another page, um, entitled page. So I'll call this one, uh, new name, page one. Call this one, page two. Okay, <laughs> that disappeared. Okay. okay, Google. <laughs> so page two. And then now I'm gonna add um I'm gonna add a I'm gonna do something on let me see. Something on age. Yes. I'm gonna do something on age. Um, is there anyone that wants to suggest like a type of chart that we can use for age? and gender separately you can just type it in the in the chat box um okay pi for age okay i'll use pi for age and then donut for for gender, I love donuts. As in like the real donuts. <laughs> yeah, it's looking really nice. Let's see how we can. Um How we can style that a bit, max lines. Okay, so this is just like styling of color and all of that percentage label. Yeah, I like having the label on there. Um, or maybe you can choose value or you can choose percentage like percentage kind of gives us a better idea of the number the value in relation to the whole group and so that will be age and also maybe something i'm forgetting to add is the title of the chart itself because yeah um Okay, it's okay, it's fine. We can just add that in the, um, I'll add that using um, manually using text. Because um, right now we have it on, on, on hover. So when you hover over it, it's supposed to give you the title. And then 
Next, we're going to do gender. Mm, okay, gender. So set up once again. Um, it picks up from the the first set of dimensions that we were working with. So this is not an issue. You just go back to your first column, go to setup, change the dimension that you're looking at, and um, search the one that you want. Uh, so I'm gonna do gender. There we go, male and female. Now I'm interested in seeing the types of um, the types of clothes based on gender. Maybe I can also look at the types of um, okay, let me not complicate it. Let me do types of clothes based on gender. And this is also easy. You can use your shortcuts or you can simply click on it. Then let me see if it shows here. You can duplicate, move it over here. And then gender, uh, clothing by gender, clothing by landing page, clothing by, okay, I can't really see that one. So, oh, clothing by content group, clothing by landing content group, clothing by previous content group. So I'll say clothing by gender. Not set, okay. I think that's the boring thing about working with sample data is that you don't know what you don't know the full extent of the data sets, but um, yeah, but we'll just keep working on it with it anyways, because I think the biggest thing that I want you to get out of this is just for you to be familiar with the platform. And I think if you see someone else making mistakes, it makes you feel comfortable <laughs> when you work on it later. Um, so let's change our, um, um, let's change this. Let me see what else we can get under gender. Um, maybe let me, okay. Okay, I'm just gonna do um, destination. Oh, that's a small amount, but anyways, I think, this is um this is not the best data set to show in a donut because clearly most of it will be not set most of the time when they say not set it means it's probably coming directly from the store based on my experience um okay so i'm just going to go and ahead and delete that cuz it's kind of filling up my space for nothing um and then I just want to show you how to add titles. I want to show you how to add titles. You can also add images. You can add lines. There's so many things that you can you could do. So, um, so I'm just going to add title over here. You click on add text. Um, and then you can create. Ooh. Oh, my fingers are not. Okay, and then there's a mark over there. It's a bit too small, so I'm going to make it bigger, but take it to 30. Let's see where we are. I'm going to make it center, and I'm going to say work data visualization. workshop chart examples. And then drop my prepared by Yan Mayenga date. 13 April 2023, submitted to GSSG. 
A. Oh, GSS A. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, and um, and then other information that go onto the title, the title sequence of a graph, and yeah, and when it, and then you'd also use the same the same process to to label your different charts. So here, here. And top, um, new visitors by gender. New visitors by age. And yeah, and then there's so many other things that you can do. So um, you know, depending on so for instance, if we had if if we had done maybe the um, the clothing favorite clothing, most popular clothing types by by a uh, by gender, then you also have an opportunity over here to add um, to add those images here if you really want to turn this report into like a fully comprehensive one with examples and links here and there. And I think what I'm trying to say is that you can build your whole presentation on this platform, you know, like from writing, like you can add a page for, for example, I would add, okay, so this page one of, Whatever I would add a page, new page. Okay, I would like to move this one forward, but um, you know, instead of having to work on multiple platforms, like one person is working on Google Sheets, one on Word points, the other is working on on key points. And, and then you still need to take all of this information, put it onto one platform, then share it. You really could do everything over here. Like, um, so this is a, this could be your front page. Presentation, front page. You know, add your whatever you want to add over there to make your front page much nicer. And then when it comes to how you move between the pages, you'll see that um, this, um, the errors, the page number that you're on is shown up here in your toolbox and you can just move between the pages like that. So that one, page one was our first one. And then, yeah. Page two is our second one. And then, um, yeah, this is for adding more data sets. Back again, you can connect your existing data sets or you can just like connect, um, use, use one of your um, CSV data sets or Excel data sets. I think CSV though. And then adding charts, community um, visualizations, so these are third party components and you would have to register onto one of these so that you can be able to access them. But we already do have some of these like the gauge one. We don't have the sunburst one. Instead we have, yeah, we don't have the sunburst one. We, they're on, and by we, I mean, Google Looker, there's the, there's the heat map one though. And I don't think there was the metric funnel one. Um, ZTK WhatsApp audio. Sorry about that. Okay. So, all right. So let me show you how to, how to access something on Excel. So, um, I think the best, so what I like to do is, so by Excel, you would have, you would have downloaded that information 
in i'm just going to stop sharing my screen so that i can try and find one of my excel <laughs> excel data sets and i had to close my screen because i don't know what kind of data sets i have sitting on my google sheets because what i'll need to do is go to google sheets download some data and then after that And then after that, take it into uh, take it into uh, Google Looker Studio. Um, I also strongly encourage using. I strongly encourage using the um, taking things into into Excel or Google Sheets. I just like the idea of working on the cloud. Yes, it has its limitation when it comes to things like, um, when it comes to things like, um, what's this? Like not being able to work while you're online or offline, but when it comes to collaboration and being able to access your work, no matter where in the world you are, it definitely does become convenient. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to download um, responses from a job post that was posted last year. So it won't have numbers like the type, the type of it, it won't be similar to the data sets that you work with as geologists, but um, it will have email addresses, names, age, and cities. It will have something that we can work with. Oh, we don't have city, apparently. Um I don't have age as well. I just want to see. Um, okay, let me, all right, I'm almost there. Um, okay, I think I'm just going to have to Google something. Okay. Um, Because I think the issue with the data that I have is that all of it has been has been edited. So I need to find okay, I think I have something. Okay. Um okay, please bear with me. I'm almost there. Yeah, I'm I'm just trying to download something. Yeah, okay, I found something. It's an employee data set. I don't know whose employees these are, but... Okay. 
but open yes so i have it in csv and in excel mm -hmm. format so like i said i think the best thing to do is to export it into csv but let's let's see if let's see if i'm just going to share my screen again just going to see if it's going to work with excel because mm, i know that excel sometimes does not ex um, import into google sheets so i'm going to create a new page add data uh add data my data sources uh, okay i was hoping that there would be to data Oh, okay, yes. How do you download data stored on your computer? Okay, so yes, yeah, so that's so 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 that's what I'm trying to um to show you, right? Um, so I'm just gonna try and cover it as quick as possible. So as you can see, when you click on add data, your data um your data sources pop up, right? And when you go on to my data sources here, you'll, you'll be able to access data that you have already added. Um, but you can also actually go here, like file, new report, insert data. Yeah, no, that's for thing. Okay, so I think the easiest thing to do really is to download your, is to download your data set. So let me, is to download your data set in Excel from your computer and then upload it into Google Sheets. So let me try and do it here so that, so you go onto, so I'm, I wasn't speaking as I was doing that. Add data, this pops up, you go onto Google Sheets. And remember this is for working with Excel data that is stored on your computer. So you download you, you you would save that as Excel or CSV. I think CSV to be um would be would work better. And then you would have to authorize it. So this is gonna take me to um my Gmail account. So I'll click this one. And then once I'm here, I'll have to choose which data set I'm working with um and then so like i said in order for you to have uh to be able to access um your data sets they would need to be on google sheets first so what you would do i'm going to go on to google sheets right now right i'm going to open like to show you how to load it onto your google sheets create a blank one okay let me go back maybe i was a bit fast and i didn't notice so this is my Google Sheets homepage. I'm not trying to use any of these. Instead, I um I want to upload an existing piece of data that I'm working with. So you're gonna go to blank. And once you open a new sheet, you're gonna say file, open. And under open, you're going to go to upload. And then you, you have the option to browse. So this is the one that I've just downloaded. Um, employee sam sample data. So I'm going to try uh, Excel and see how. I know Excel works with Google Sheets. Um, so yeah, so this is the data that I've just um 
that I've just downloaded, but I just noticed the mistake that I made <laughs> um, that I was working on a different, I was working on a different account then. So I'll have to do that again on the account that's opened. So file open, upload, browse. Okay, there's the data and then file. Just trying to save it, really. Um, it, 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 but it's already there. I'm just trying to make sure. So go back to the Google Sheets homepage. It should pop up here. Employee sample data. Then go back to your Looker Studio. Looker Studio. Let's close that and do that again, just so that um, it pops up. You can refresh it. Okay, I'll just search for it. There we go. And then you need to provide credentials for all of these. So click, click, click. Um, if you want to include specific ranges, in, in this case, I don't really have specific ranges, so I'll just say add. Uh, you're about to add data to this report, add. Okay, so let's say add a table and let's go with not employee id let's go with department so there we go um i'm not sure if 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 you are following there rose about how do you work with with your data sets that sits, your Excel data set that sits on your computer, mm -hmm. how you transfer it from your Google Sheet and then from your Google Sheet, making it easier for you to connect the data onto here. Um, hi Rose. Um, did that like did that make things a bit? Did I? Do you understand? Were you following? Yes. Hi. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, I think it's just realizing that everything must be on Google on our account, so then we can yes. access everything. And I see you can also open from Google Drive directly. Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thanks. Thank you. So yeah, um, you just connect all your data sources onto here. I mean, once you have your 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 own, they'll sit here. But I think it's it's better to also just work from Google Sheets or these servers because you might have limited space when it comes to the amount of data sources you can store under your home page. So it's always easy to just pull them from Google Sheets or you can upload them here. <laughs> this is what I was actually looking for, file upload. So if you don't wanna upload them onto Google Sheets, you can, um, you can upload them directly. Mm. Because then once you, so this is the employee sample data.
Okay, and then it obviously needs to load. Okay, there seems to be an error. Oh, because it was in Excel format and not CSV. So when you upload directly, it needs to be in CSV. Processing. Okay, there's an error. Let me delete that. Then. Okay, I have no idea why it keeps saying um, error, um, also because I don't know much about this, about this data set that I have, but um, Please, if if you if you're too lazy to try Google, please do try this process where you upload directly. Mm -hmm. I actually was expecting this upload file to be under my data sources, and once you've uploaded the file using this button, once you've used the file upload button, then you'll find it under my data sources as opposed to finding it under here. I think that's what was confusing me earlier. And um, yeah, I think that's it for this workshop. Um, everything is recorded and thank you so much for your time and, and just showing up today. It's been a pleasure. And yeah, hope, I don't know if there's any questions that anyone would like me to answer. Um, I have a question or rather to um, clarify. Um, can I also maybe pull data from Google Drive? Yes, you can. Okay, because um, I'm more familiar with, um, with Google Drive. Yeah, so if you go on to add chart, you will see that um, Google Drive is one of the options that are here, mm -hmm. sorry. Um, where is it? Google Ad. But yeah, Google Drive is one of the options um, that are here. But everything that's on your Google sh on your Google Sheets is also on your Google Drive. Okay. Yeah. So if it's on your Google Drive, it's also on your Google Sheets, essentially. So like you know, you can you can yeah. So Google Cloud Storage. Um. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm gonna stop sharing right now. Okay, um, is there any questions from anyone? Okay, um, if there's no question, I'd like to say thank you for everyone who has um, attended. Thank you for your time. And um, thank you very much, Ian um, and Nolene. Um, this was a very insightful workshop. Um, I really learned a lot today, and they um, mostly how to, audio. how to integrate um, these Google, um, what you call them, working spaces, uh, so that you know you can collaborate, especially with your with your colleagues. And um, yeah, thank you so much. The presentation will be available. Um, I think it will be, um, the link will be sent to everyone who has attended and for those who also couldn't make it today. 
um, everyone will be able to to have um, everyone will be sent the, the link.